for Carol McNeil, is Minister of State for European Affairs. I spoke with her earlier and asked her what would be top of the agenda when Simon Harris meets Keir Starmer in 10 days' time. I think the first and most important thing for the Taoiseach will be having that opportunity to sit down with the new British Prime Minister and, as you say, reset that relationship and begin again, uh, begin again in a really positive way, looking forward to the future. These are two islands that will always be side by side with each other, sharing a common travel area. How can we work better together over the next number of years on all of the issues that face us, both the external threats that that face us all uh, and the internal issues, making Northern Ireland work really well, uh, making Stormont work really well as co-guarantors of the Good Friday Agreement, how we can work in a closer, deeper way to make sure that Northern Ireland is that great success that we all want it to be. So I think the Taoiseach is very pleased to see, you know, that the priority that's being placed by the new Prime Minister on the relationship with Ireland. There is an important European political community meeting on the 18th uh, and the meeting with the Taoiseach will take place before that as well as a working dinner the night before that. So that's very clear to us, the emphasis and priority that the new British Prime Minister has placed on his relationship with Ireland, his priority with Ireland. And that certainly reflects the tone and the, the ambition of the Irish government and the Taoiseach in particular in, in, in resetting that relationship in a really structured and positive way for the yes. future. You say starting again in a positive way. How badly damaged is the relationship with the UK, um, particularly since Brexit? We have always had a close relationship and there were periods where it was incredibly strong back when the Queen was visiting us, what, 13 years ago. There's no question but that Brexit placed strain on the relationship because we have had to work through the practical issues of the United Kingdom coming out of the European Union. So we always want to begin again and we always want to look forward and this is an opportunity as any new political um, new, new political relationship is, an opportunity to work constructively. We will always be uh, neighbours, we will always be close friends, we will always have family family sharing the, the two islands and we want it to be a really positive relationship. We also want to be able to be constructive and supportive to the UK in any way that it wants to work more closely with the European Union. And, you know, th- those interests are so closely aligned for us. Uh, and certainly, say, for example, me as Minister for European Affairs want to be able to be constructive around any areas where the United Kingdom may wish to place emphasis on ironing out some practicalities with the relationship with the European Union for the future. Okay. So this is a moment of positivity. Uh, we're very pleased to see the emphasis that the British Prime Minister has placed on the relationship with Ireland and also very pleased to see the focus on Northern Ireland. He's appointed an excellent minister now, Hilary Benn, as Secretary of State, who's there on the ground straight away. That's very constructive and positive. And I think this is an opportunity for both countries now to work closely and positively together. And I want to ask you about Northern Ireland uh, and the, the Northern Ireland Troubles Legacy Bill, which was enacted last September by the Tory government and which stopped criminal and civil investigations and inquests from going ahead which relate to the troubles in Northern Ireland um, and which was almost universally opposed by uh, the parties in Northern Ireland. Um, is the government, is it the government's expectation that the new UK government will repeal that legacy bill? Well, that legacy bill, as you know, was opposed by everybody in Northern Ireland, everybody in Ireland uh, and all of the political parties except for the Tory party in the United Kingdom. And it was very clear you will have seen the Labour Party manifesto as much as I have seen it, that they're, they have signalled an intent to, to make changes to that. And indeed, the early commentary reflects that intent in the manifesto. But I am very conscious that this is a new government who are trying to get their feet under the table. We, uh, you know, we've got to leave them the space to do that. And it is up to them what they choose but, but to do. But you want but them to do that. They, they, you want them to do that. We have been very clear about our view about the Legacy Act, that it is not the right approach. Uh, unfortunately, the Irish government did have to initiate interstate proceedings in the in the ECHR against the against that legislation. But again, let the, the new British government settle in, get their feet under the table. Certainly, the commitments that they made in the manifesto and the early commentary, even in the last couple of days, has, has been very positive about where they may go with the Legacy Act. But the last thing I want to do now is step across them when they have an opportunity to get their feet under the table and actually get on with the work that they have promised to do across the board in their manifesto. But it does look as though this is the direction they may travel. And that would, of course, be very welcome for everybody uh, on this island and most importantly for the victims of the Troubles who need uh, a different way of, 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 of finding justice. We heard Prime Minister Starmer say yesterday that uh, he would um, uh, scrap the, the Rwanda policy, uh, 
uh, developed by his predecessors. Do you welcome that and do you believe that it will lead to a decrease in the number of migrants who were coming from the UK into the Republic of Ireland via, uh, perhaps by um, by Northern Ireland, um, uh, uh, because perhaps they were afraid that they would be deported to Rwanda? Well, again, domestic, you know, policy, you know, will be a matter for the new British government. Again, you'll have seen the commitments in the Labour Party manifesto. But I think where we have always been really concerned about is the operation of the common travel area. And that is something that we have enjoyed and has worked really positively for very many decades. And we wish it to for very many decades to come. It Challenges have been thrown up towards the common travel area, both around questions around Brexit, you know, issues around the management of migration. And as these issues arise, we both, we, we want to work constructively with every British government to managing the different issues as they arise. This has been won over the past number of months uh, and we now look forward to working with the new British government on maintaining okay. all of the benefits of the common travel area that, that we have enjoyed together. Do you expect the new UK government to take back asylum seekers um, uh, who, who have come in to the Republic uh, I- illegally as uh, something the Tories were refusing to do. Well, again, this is a new government that, that you know, that uh, from our perspective in Ireland, we want to allow them the space to implement their own domestic policy. We want to work constructively uh, and, and we see a, re- a real opportunity to do that. So let me not step across them, okay. let them get under the feet under the table. The noises are good so far and we're there to work constructively. We're really pleased to see the emphasis that the new British Prime Minister has placed on the relationship with the Taoiseach and on making that real at a very early stage and prioritising you know, space and time with the Taoiseach over, it could have been any other leader, it could have been anybody else coming to the European political community, uh, you know, but he chose to prioritise Ireland and we see that's the space we want to be in as well. All right. Uh, b- before I let you go, Minister, I want to ask for your reaction to the investigation by RTE Investigates and the Sunday Independent into allegations that coaches who are active in women's football engaged in inappropriate relationships with players and are also accused by some of them of making unwanted sexual advances on players. What is your reaction to what you, you have heard and read and what do you think should happen next? The revelations in this investigation are yet another example of the things that women have had to put up with in different ways, particularly women in vulnerable positions or, you know, with people in authority. And I think women up and down Ireland are absolutely sick and tired of it, both historically and in a current way. And it just has to stop. That was the Minister for European Affairs, Jennifer Carol McNeil, speaking with me earlier. Let's stay with.